Hello everybody, it's Vertical Sandwich. It's time to finish up what we were doing last video. And clean out some miscellaneous stuff in the Akuta bar, in and around the Akuta bar. This is going to be a really short video because what's coming next is long. And a pain in the butt. It's a long pain in the butt. Alright, so this door is on a timer. The minute you step on the pressure pad, it opens. The minute you step off, it starts to close. And, uh, the point is, run and duck. Run and duck, and then dive. And then duck. See? Run. Duck. Dive. Oh, well, if you make it all the way through. I didn't need to do that, really, but, um, so I really messed up this, oh, yeah, actually, I, I kind of didn't do that. Uh, I really messed up this next section, so, um, we, we get this, and we clearly have, we have enough to buy the engine to go into outer space, but I'm saving that for live commentary. So, some things that may be confusing, when you buy uh, Mingzu's uh, two pearls, after a while you will get an email saying that there are more pearls for sale. So, there's four total, I believe. And, uh, the same thing with um, playing the pallets game, like the air hockey game. You beat that once, and then you get an email saying you can do it again. It doesn't seem to get much harder. So, then there's, there's this. And the way I messed this up, I, I actually, this is the one spot in this cleanup where I wish I had done live time again. Because this was so frustrating. And the stuff I did in this section is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like, the way that this is meant to go is, like, you run down here, right? And it's pretty straightforward. It's another, you know, running, running backwards chase scene. And you get here, and you're just supposed to turn around and then go up. And, like, I didn't realize that. I just thought it was a dead end. So I literally stay around here and, like, fight and do crazy stuff. Forever. Forever. Like, yeah, I didn't realize that it's a loop. It's, it's clearly self-explanatory that it's, like, a loop. And if you're just following the path, you'd run back up, you'd run directly into oncoming guards, and you'd be like, there we go. Like, you just go around, there's like a little area for you to run up. And I just couldn't, I couldn't get that through my head. It's really sad. I mean, it is a little amazing how long I held out, and the kind of, the glitchiness of the system. I think at one point I get the alarm to go away. Like, by hiding. Yeah, I should just run up there. Like, I just think it's going... For some reason I have this mental block where I think that, like, going back up there means that I'm going back the way I came. Which isn't the case. And fighting this guy in this little, like, closed area is hard. Like, you definitely don't want to do this. Yeah, I actually, in my, in the, the file I just did, I still didn't quite, quite get it. I just, like, I just kept running. I knew that I just had to keep running, and it worked out perfectly. So we got that guy. I'm just trying, just everything. Just, just don't even know. Because I, the, the force field to go back the way I came, I'm assuming is a force field everywhere. So here we go. We get, we actually get like zone clearing on right? Yeah, 
I think I can't run past here. But I physically get the zone clear. Like, I'm not fooling the guy with the guns. He knows I'm still there. So now I get it. Like, you just run up here, those guys blow up that. You run over here. It's just a continuation of the chase. That's it. And this is the way out. You don't have to do any of that crazy stuff like you did. It just works. You could just run up there and do that. Miss Jade, everything all right? Fine, but we better get out of here before they discover what I just borrowed from them. And we can't go back. We did it. We got it. It's good. It's fine. It's wonderful. Fantastic. So then I spent a little time in the shed before realizing where I get the code for the shed. We're going to show where to get the code for the shed, but I'll empty out the shed later. So, uh, I strongly suggest before you attempt this challenge, you save. So if you run out of money, you can reset your game, reload your game, which I did, uh, well, at least once. Go! And beating Francis, it's really these first two shots are pretty important to keep him from shooting, like, all of his pallets all the way over. You win. Like, you can, you know, that was like a five-shot victory. It usually takes me a little longer than that. Yeah, you like you just shoot that one off, and it's not that easy usually. That was my practice. Go. And a little like, horrible start right there. Look at this. Look at this. I'm like I'm a pixel off at every shot. You lose. Go. But I did. I, I I did multiple tries, just like resetting the game to get good at this. And, like, that's really what a victory against him should be. Easier said than done. Not bad, Jade. Yeah, that one that starts, like, against the wall you win. can be really wrong. All right, fine, you win. So, that's Pearl 1 from uh, Francis and the Disc Game. And now something else. So what you wouldn't, what I didn't notice is that there is, like, there's one of the racers from the the hovercraft races is sitting at a table, like, right here, and there's a code there. And he'll cover it up if you get close enough. I mean, we can clearly see it there. Uh, but if you really want to see it, uh, the easiest way to see it is to come up here. Because then you're far away from him, and just use your camera and zoom in, and you'll get like a, a clearly unobstructed view. There it is, B6, G7, and uh, that's the code for this room. So there we go, free pearl. Well, free locker that has a pearl on it and some turbos, because he's a racer. And then finally, in the room at the end of the hall, there's a guy with his head down on the table, and if you talk to him, he'll give you a code. And the code is just for a locker in an area called the shed. And the locker in the shed also has a pearl in it. So it's like free Akuta Bar codes. You don't really have to do anything. And I think this is me right now, just writing down stuff I don't have. But it'll give you a good idea of what we've gotten and haven't. So I'm leaving it in. But yeah, I'm just writing down so I can like look up in code guides where pearls are and stuff, because, you know, we're doing clean out. This is a lot. We've, we've done a lot. And, uh, you have, there's a total of 88 pearls. I looked it up. You get an M disc for getting all 88 pearls, which we will get, because we get all 88 pearls. Yeah. 
Sorry, Rufus. I may seem a little pushy, but Hillis needs this more than yeah, you Yeah, so we stole from Rufus. And it, Hillis actually doesn't need it. We don't need it. Like, we're gilding the lily at this point. We have enough to buy the last item. We don't need to take anything from Rufus. Don't break up the team. Carlson and Peters, page 823. Ah, there you go. He'll threaten you about eating families with kids and stuff. So, yeah, uh... Upstairs, first door on the, well, door right in front here. This guy will tell you a story about how he never should have tried to steal from the alpha sections. That he was, uh, he's just trying to, uh, he was just trying to feed his family. Yeah, all he want to do is feed his family. And uh, that's it. He'll like he'll he'll just give us this free code. Perfecto. I've scanned it. All right. So when we come in, there's another alpha section like platforming kind of puzzle area that uh, that we'll be taking on. I will see you guys for that. And thanks for watching. Bye everybody.